So within your book, you, you do talk about uh, the near horizon, which you said was uh, like 10 to 20 years. So mm -hmm. What do you see as the most exciting technologies that kind of fit into that space? Right now. So for me, it really comes down to free thing. And, and obviously, we have more things to happen, right? And well, that's why it's the book. It's just not five minutes conversation. Okay. But if you ask me, so three things um, are of particular importance and excitement for me. So one is gene editing and gene therapy. And I do believe that uh, we made enormous progress in, in this field. Um, 30 years ago, it took US 13 years and $3 billion to sequence human genome. And then when CRISPR were, were invented, this genetic scissors technology, metaphorically speaking again, um, then it was literally available to a handful of people on earth and they had nothing to lose. They had rare diseases and that was like their only chance to stay alive. So um, right now we, we can enjoy the benefit of gene editing and gene therapy. And like we all participating in the global positive, I do believe it's positive experiment in gene therapy with mRNA vaccines like Moderna and, and some other um, uh, COVID vaccines. And it's amazing. And they've been developed like in the course of days. Obviously, just a lot of work were behind that. But I was just reading the article uh, like a month ago, and it says Moderna vaccine has been developed in the course of two days. So that's amazing. And like, we already know all 3000 genes in our DNA, which are responsible for longevity. So, and uh, <clears throat> if we can influence that, obviously we can reverse aging. We can reverse aging today. Like all of the interventions that I, mentioned to you today like if you stick to this protocol for like eight weeks and this is a recent study came out early this year your biological age will be reversed by three years you'll become three years younger based on a set of biomarkers so that's amazing so we'll be able to reverse aging we'll be able to fight age-related diseases we all know after aging processes starts inside our bodies anywhere between 40 and 50 years <clears throat> and like like after 50 years our chances to um, die from one of these kind of four uh, diseases, um, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and neurogenerative disease uh, increase exponentially. And these four are uh, responsible for 90% of deaths after the age of 50. So we will be able to influence this on genetic level. So that's one. Second thing for me is um, uh, what I call longevity in appeal. In five, 10 years from now, we're going to have completely a different class of drugs. And there's going to be drugs which are not focusing on particular disease, on specific disease, but they are looking at um, aging process as a whole inside our body. And therefore, they will fight age-related diseases uh, overall as a portfolio rather than you know, any individual disease. It might be some of the drugs that we have today, like metformin, the old diabetes drug, or rapamycin, immunosuppressant, by the way, I'm not suggesting you to take that. So, well, it's just, we need to have proper human trials of these drugs in the context of longevity. So I think it's just too early. Um, or it can be drug developed by artificial intelligence because we invested in a number of companies in LVF and what they do, they compress the first couple of years of drug development cycle in a couple of months. And this is all the beauty of integrating uh, human intelligence and artificial and uh, computer uh, intelligence as well. So that's like a second piece for me. So it's completely new class of new class of drugs. And the third one is um, organ regeneration. There's so many things happening in organ regeneration space. You can even imagine. So there's an option to do like 3D uh, bioprinting of organs. 90-95% um, of these organs is still end up in, in a labs. It's just really important tool for academia for uh, scientists to test uh, different interventions and different scientific hypotheses, but it's still better than um, you know, using any other alternatives. And it's actually, you know, makes our research more efficient. But in the future, uh, we will be able to use, you know, some of the version of 3D bioprinting in, in organ replacement and organ regeneration field. Or you can use, you know, other animals to, um, 
regrow organs uh, for humans like pigs. And this is what is done by United Therapeutics and uh, Martin Rodblad, um, uh, amazing woman, amazing scientist and inventor and entrepreneur. Or uh, we invested in a company and it was, it was actually found by Jim Mellon uh, and Juvenescence. Uh, they were early investors in that. It's called like Genesis. They use our lymph nodes to regrow uh, uh, liver. And uh, they just take donor liver, split it in 50 to 75 pieces. Uh, and each of these pieces, this is, each of these nucleus, they put in our lymph node. And then in the course of three to six months, a new liver regrows in human bodies, supporting and taking the function of, of your main liver, uh, who are currently um, is not in a proper condition. Uh, so that's, again, it, it, it sounds like sci-fi, but... Like Janice has done their trials already on um, dogs, you know, mice, uh, primates, pigs, and they started human trials in November this year. They got FDA approval for human trials for this organ regeneration technology um, earlier this year in the US. So this is all coming. This is not right now, but again, in the next 5, 10, 15 years, we'll have completely different uh, opportunities and ability to extend the healthy portion of our uh, lifespan. Well, that's why it's very important to stay in longevity bridge, to take care of your, you know, uh, body and, and, and mind uh, based on the things that I shared or some, you can use protocols or any other person that you like, but it's really important that, uh, to make sure that our body and our uh, brain is worth extending its resource in 10, 20 years from now.